who are your parents, your mother, your father, your sister and brother and friend, and he goes on putting the name on it. Okay, so that is what the capability AI has brought on the table today, and this is going to go ahead, gentlemen. Okay, so it is all around us. Uh, let us not uh, say that AI is not there. AI, is, if you are watching Netflix, the recommendation engine is based on AI. On Amazon, when you go and buy. It's a recommendation engine, it's based on AI. It comes out and tells you what product you should be buying or what additional product you should be buying. One concept which I would love to bring it in the floor is that AI, as it comes in, okay, it also adds, and that's the narrative we carry, uh, an existential risk for India too. Okay, What is happening? If you look at this uh, data set, you will find by 2000, and we call it great decoupling. By 2000, the productivity of human beings is starting. Sir, unaudible. Inaudible. So, right, right. Somebody is actually muting me. So, that is the reason. Okay. I have unmuted myself. Are you able to hear me now? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, somebody muted me. Uh, I don't know. That's your end issue, it seems. Okay. Uh, so, what I was trying to tell you, gentlemen, is that uh, the machine productivity has been going up. And the human productivity has been going down. Okay, uh, from 2000 onwards, uh, if you look at the data, the productivity or the labor productivity using automation has been going up. And now that automation is being enhanced by AI because AI brings the capability which is near us. It brings the human parity. Okay, so that productivity is not doubling up and going up. And human productivity like labor, knowledge workers, service people, our productivity is now stagnating, okay? And, and which has reduced uh, uh, the income also, the private employment. Uh, if you look at the family income, the jobs, I mean, every robo uh, which is implemented out of 1,000.4 uh, uh, people are unemployed, right? So it is adding to the woes now. And um, so the workers, uh, they, we are falling behind uh, with machines. And machines are generating more productivity and more value now. But it generates another aspect of it which we need to understand. As the machines are deployed and the productivity goes up, it, um, uh, I mean, with more automation, the productivity has gone up. It has also created an inequality, an income inequality. What it tells us, the 10% of the population has got the 90% of the money, and 90% of the population has got only 10% of the money. With walk, AI walking into automation, it will also get greatly enhanced. In terms that one percent of the population will have the ninety percent of the money, okay, and the rest of the people will be having the ten percent of the money, okay. Ninety-nine percent people will be having a ten percent of the money. With robots and AI walking in, this in income inequality will go up, and there will be three. There are three reasons for it, okay. When automation or AI-based automation comes in, the share in production of robots goes up, okay, because they are doing a better job. They are working twenty-four into seven. So there, there the production goes up and it means more and more robots will be employed and the skilled workers will be asked to leave the job, right? They will be not employed there. So share in production of robots will go up. That is one reason. As there, there more and more robots gets employed, the investment flow to those areas like India, okay, uh, in our manufacturing industry will be coming in, the capital investment will be coming in to those companies who employ more and more robots, right? So the investment inflow will get dried up because advanced countries, they are putting up more robots into their uh, factories. Okay, so they will try to stop and do more capital investment there, not in countries like India or other uh, developing um, uh, countries or underdeveloped countries they put the money in. So the capital expenditure will be more. So investment flow to us will reduce. And third, most important, as it reduces, it will also change the terms of trade. So tomorrow, when they will come and place an order and they will say, hey guys, uh, your, your manufacturing facility, you have got 
more humans, skilled and unskilled labor. If you are not putting robots into that place, we will not buy from you. Okay, it is similar to what has happened to the child labor. Okay, those factories which employ child labor, uh, we have virtually stopped giving them orders to them. Nobody buys from them. Similar thing will happen if you have employed humans, we will not give you order. You need to automate, you need to bring in more robots because the production is there, uh, more quality is there, then we will buy from you. So this will actually generate more in income inequality. And that means countries like India who believes in um, uh, demographic transition. I mean, our population is very high. We have got more than 42 percent people who are young. OK, probably we are looking in a future due to AI, the economic future which is coming in. We will see more unemployment. Okay. Hello. Right. So that means. Let me go back. I have thought that again somebody has muted me. So what will happen? The gap between uh, our, our sustainability of countries like us, the developing countries, with AI coming in and more and more automation coming in, AI-based automation will reduce, and it may impose an existential risk to India, country like India. Okay. So if you look at uh, this data set on AI progression, you see this is Gartner hype cycle. More and more AI technologies are going towards the trough of disillusionment or it has gone up on the plateau of productivity. So AI, the trending part of the technology, which are there like NLP, computer vision, pattern recognition, every company is investing in and they are working with it now. So the future uh, is definitely AI and uh, we should wake up to the fact and see that we are well aligned to that, uh, this technology. Revenue of uh, from AI globally uh, being predicted to pick up uh, to around uh, 35 billion dollars 35 trillion dollars uh, by uh, 2025 so we are already in 2021 there are a lot of um, um, employment coming in for data analytics and ai experts and um, um, the businesses will be available up to 35 trillion dollars um, uh, by 2025 so there is a lot of job uh, which uh, this uh, ai and associated technology we call it ai emerging and foundational technologies will be generating Okay. Sorry. So let us try to understand AI a little. Okay. And um, so if you, when you do a search like AI on Google, go ahead and do that. Uh, you will find a lot of words uh, which get thrown at you neural networks, planning, robotics, machine learning, natural language processing like Siri, Alexa, and all, perception, ontology, knowledge systems, cognitive systems, all that is. That actually defines AI because AI currently is in a stage we call it a machine learning stage or an artificial narrow intelligence stage. Okay, so this is all uh, which is defining AI. And if you want to understand a little better, what I can do, I'm putting it in two categories. One is uh, AI, where machine learning or AI which is there, uh, we humans are still making decisions, this is augmenting us, and where AI is taking its decision on its end, and humans are not in. Uh, the loop, right? So if you look from the human in the loop, there are two kinds of AI technologies. One is uh, the assisted intelligence, which is hardwired and a specific system. I mean, they are AI, we have taught it, and it is doing a job continuously, repetitively, and, but it doesn't learn anything further, okay? So we call them hardwired systems. But if that AI, which we have taught and uh, put into, which is assisting you, you are making a decision, but it is also learning from your decision learning from the new data sets which is receiving then we call it the adoptive systems or systems which is evolving let us go on the right hand side of the no humans in the loop there is a plain old automation or the industrial automation uh, which is hardwired the codes have been written by us okay so you go to a factory floor and uh, volkswagen and all you will find uh, that the whole uh, factory line is on conveyor belt the car is moving and the robotic arms are actually putting the doors 
and it moves up and they put the seat inside. Uh, some robotic arm will put the glass on top of it. Then it moves up, it will get painted and the final product will be out. Very, very, less, very less humans are there in that factory. It is completely automated. Okay, so that is one part of the industrial automation. But on the adoptive systems, and where there is a lot of concern is the autonomous intelligence. So this intelligence is an adoptive system. It is learning on its own and becoming better day by day. And let me give you an example. You must have heard about autonomous cars. Autonomous cars are autonomous intelligence. Okay, they are watching. They have got uh, camera fitted. They have got lidar fitted, ultraviolet radar. They are looking at potholes. They are uh, connected to the maps, Google Maps. They understand how they are negative navigating the road. And if there is any obstruction, they stop it. So all that work they are doing it. They are already reached level three. And and countries like US and all, uh, they are delivering pizza. They are ferrying people from one place to another place. And very soon we'll uh, find them on Indian streets too, right? So what is the artificial intelligence roadmap if you look at? The current roadmap is that applied AI or machine learning is already rising up on the plateau of productivity. It means it is becoming a norm and every com company is adopting it. But AGI, artificial general intelligence, that's the next level of technology uh, from applied AI, which is artificial narrow intelligence, it is now picking up. It is, it is going up, it's the technology uh, triggers are there already. There are technologies which is going to bring AGI technologies uh, on the floor or AGI. AGI is like us gentlemen. Okay. So when I say AGI, artificial general intelligence, you can imagine it is like us, human beings. So a narrow intelligence have got two drawbacks. Okay. Artificial narrow intelligence. First, if you teach something to him and then you go ahead and teach something else to him, he will forget the last part of it, which is known as catastrophic uh, forgetfulness. Okay, or catastrophic interference. So they forget about the last. So if he knows how to drive a car and that AI you teach him how to fly a plane, it will forget about driving a car. But we humans don't do that. Okay, if you have learned swimming or a cycling in early childhood, later on in any part of time of your life, you will, if somebody gives you a bicycle, you will be able to drive it. Or somebody puts you into water, you will be able to swim into it. So we don't forget whatever we do. That is one differentiation between artificial narrow intelligence and artificial general intelligence. Second, ANI operates on a structured data set, whereas artificial general intelligence operates upon unstructured data set, which is like the tacitus, the touch, the eye, the vision, the olfactory organ, the smell, the hearing capability, and the test bird. This makes our reality, and this is unstructured data. We make sense out of it. Okay. Um, the artificial general intelligence will be also able to do the same thing. Okay, it will be able to make the sense from the unstructured data. So that is happening. But the, you know the total, the investment which is currently happening in AI, the rates of AI which is there on Industrial Revolution 4.0 is all towards artificial super intelligence. To understand a ASI, ASI is like oh, put all the humans together, put all the books of the world together, all the knowledge we have gained. If you put it into one entity, that entity is artificial superintelligence. Okay. So from uh, from narrow intelligence, the world will move to AGI, and a lot of investment is happening. Microsoft recently gave a billion dollar dollar uh, to organization known as OpenAI in US to develop AGI technologies. Okay. So a lot of money. Uh, US is putting more than three trillion dollars. China is putting 147 billion dollars. And they have got plans. They have got executive plan for AI implementation, R&D and implementation. A lot of implementation. They are doing it already, right? So, and they have adopted a strategy. They call it AI first strategy. So, but how we will move from narrow intelligence uh, to general intelligence and then to the super intelligence? If you look at all this, uh, I mean, a lot of people doubt about it. So, basically, let me give you an example. We humans have got multiple kind of intelligence, like a spatial intelligence naturalist, musical intelligence, logical and mathematical intelligence, existential existence, uh, interpersonal, body kinesthetic, linguistic, intrapersonal. And if you look at your people around you, we all excel in one or other. Somebody is very good in math. Somebody is very good in talking. Somebody is very good in uh, finding path and navigating itself into that. Okay. But look at AI in narrow intelligence world, like Google Maps. If one of, all of us are using it. And Google Maps is much more than better now than our navigation capability. Okay, that's in AI. It is leveraging AI to guide you from one place to another. 
So AI is already excelling into the places where they have been deployed into. Okay, in predicting heart failure, AI accuracy is much more higher than any other companies. I mean, the people or doctors' um, uh, prediction capability. So AI is already playing a lot of roles, gentlemen. They are playing the role of personal assistant, translator, or a clinician, or a machine operator. Even it is cooking food, so it is playing a role of a chef also. But technology is, uh, it, it has become a writer. They are writing books, or paintings, painters. So a lot of roles now AI has already started playing, and you will find more and more AI coming in future to us. One thing which I always want, the intuitive AI, okay? The intuitive AI, AI has walked into design space now. We are leveraging AI to design. Like in this dream catcher project, uh, a vehicle was fitted with um, a lot of uh, sensors. It collected over a period of time around 4 billion parameters. Those parameters were picked up and given to AI to design a car, okay? And it came out with this, it fabricated, uh, it explored a lot of other uh, cars and their fabrication, and then it came out with finally a fabrication which was named as a dream catcher, this project, which is an example of an intuitive AI. So AI learning and on intuition generating or designing new things for us, okay? So this is now known as computational engineering, and um, you guys can explore that area. Um, all this which leverages uh, your applied mathematics and computer science and engineering, this computational engineering, and it leverages a lot of other areas on, um, like data-centric digitalization and all. So uh, this computational engineering is actually uh, leveraging AI how to design new products and uh, applications for human beings, which is more impactful to us, okay? So this uh, particular project, which recently was uh, done by in US, in California, and this uh, they, they actually gave AI and uh, took AI help to design a new car, they call it Jinger 21C. It's a hyper car. It was all designed by AI, okay? And wonderful part, if you look at the fabrication, currently if you look at any car which we drive, uh, basically the car body, they put holes into it to drive the wire through. But this car, AI designed a fabricated body, a body where the pipes were put into to actually run the wires tomorrow. It was like a nervous system they designed it. That's the capability of AI. Okay, it is and it collects a lot of parameters to design a car. Not only that, AI is also helping to actually produce the car. So they have got augmented units uh, down below, and every augmented unit is a set of robotic arms, which is coordinated by AI, and all the components of this car is 3D printed and brought together by these, and they generate a car. Now, the car production from 36 days has dropped down to 36 hours because everything is being done by uh, AI in augmented units. So multiple augment, augmented unit, each augmented unit will go on generating cars now. So that's the future we are looking at, which is augmenting of us, the humans, okay? But it has got a challenge. AI in innovation cycle, if AI goes into innovation cycle and countries and companies who leverages it, then we don't have any hope. Okay, I'll give you an example to understand it. Um, you must be watching this movie, Spectral. Uh, you can download on it, it's available on Netflix. You can go ahead and download it and see that movie. Uh, so it's a war going on in Bosnia and um, a civil war. And suddenly, an Spectral, which is in Hindi, it means bhoot or ghost. Okay, it comes in, which they are able to see, the US soldiers are able to see that uh, from their night vision camera. And it comes and kills them. Okay, so they get DARPA scientists and Navy, uh, US Navy scientists involved into it. They dub it and they identify and say, hey, this is both Einstein condition. Ye jo bhoot hai, this is both Einstein condition. So they say, what is both Einstein condition? It was a theorem which actually tells us that near absolute zero, anything in this world takes a waveform. Okay. And this, and this was proven. By the scientists who got Nobel Prize in odd 1972. Okay. Sorry. So I was also uh, un uh, muted. So I'm just unmuting myself. I now understand why I can't.
So these uh, two uh, novel scientists, they developed it, uh, a, a pattern of laser beams to slow down the molecule. And you know, when the molecule is slowed down with the laser beam, um, what happens? It cools. Okay. So when uh, as the molecules cool down, the temperature starts falling in. So and they took it near absolute zero and uh, minus 253 uh, uh, degrees Celsius, and they proved both Einstein condition. Now, same problem with these two Nobel scientists. They did it in 12 years, was given to a deep learning platform in Australia to develop this pattern of laser beams. You know, AI developed the same pattern of laser beams in only two hours. So you can well imagine that when AI will walk into our innovation cycle, we what we will be watching. A runaway innovation, OK? We can work on uh, a few technologies, but AI can work on hundreds of technologies at the same time. OK, so we will be looking at a runaway innovation. One thing we need to understand, gentlemen, is that industrial revolution for 1.0 happened due to steam. OK, we were not party to it. It happened in Europe. They developed steam ships, machine guns, railway engines, and the resultant was that India was a slave country or we were slaves for 200 years. OK, industrial revolution 2.0 happened. It was it happened due to electricity. They established a lot of electricity plants and all and uh, and it created the great divide. We are still a developing nation. So people who consume more electricity, they are considered to be a larger economy and better economy and uh, they and, 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 and they are developed nations, right? So and they have got um, their GDP is higher than us multiple times. So US has got 21 uh, trillion dollar GDP. We have still got only three trillion dollar GDP. So they created the great divide between rich and poor, right? Rich countries and poor countries. Industrial revolution 3.0, which happened on computing, that is where we caught up. Today we are producing around 287 billion dollar of worth of IT exports. 55 percent of the global services is in India in IT. 3.5 million people we are working into IT uh, countries. And world has woken to the fact that India does have a smart people. OK, so but industrial revolution 4.0, which is happening, is happening due to intelligence, due to AI. OK, and if we are not party to it, probably we are looking at a perpetual servitude. OK, this is what a, a slavery which will be permanent. OK, so we have to wake up to that fact. And let me tell you that the world from the electricity days, everything you are working on today has got electricity. It has been electrified. Now AI will all these electrical organized as, um, assets which we have or machines which we have will now get cognified. OK, it will become intelligent. So your fridge will become intelligent. Your AC will become intelligent. Everything is going to become intelligent. Your phones are already intelligent, by the way, gentlemen, right? Like if you are using an iPhone, it recognizes you. It has got an AI into it. It recognizes you and opens the iPhone for you, right? So um, everything is becoming more and more intelligent, and they will get cognified. So it's not from electrified being and getting uh, electrified or electrification. Now we are looking at cognification of all the machines around us. Okay, so we need to wake up to this fact and invest more into that space. Every industry, government, academia, they need to focus on AI, and that is where we are handholding them, helping them. To move into this direction. If you look at that uh, down below, uh, the quantum, uh, this uh, uh, Gartner hype cycle, you will find one technology. A lot of other technologies are all related to AI, uh, which is actually moving up on the plateau of productivity. But on the innovation trigger, you will find one technology, and that is quantum computing. Okay. Quantum computing is the technology which is actually going to assist and bring more revolution towards the AI technology. Then I'll explain it to you why. So if you look from there down below, currently we are in a stage from quantum computing, uh, which we call it quantum annealer. OK, uh, it is around 128 bits, uh, which is uh, uh, a company known as Regic. It has developed this quantum annealer. And 100 bits, qubits, or quantum bits, qubits, a quantum computer or quantum annealer is more powerful than uh, your uh, supercomputer on this earth. OK, and uh, so it is more powerful than Hunan one in China, which is a supercomputer there. 
And as it moves, they say, I mean, if you look at the data sets, that 500 qubits quantum computer will be more powerful than put you all, put all the computer, server, mobile devices, every device together, the computational capability, the cloud and everything together, 500 qubits quantum computer will be more powerful than that, okay? It is few years downstream, guys, and this will be in the analog quantum computer, okay? So that is going to come in. It is already companies are working on it and it will come in. The universal quantum computer, which will be 100,000 qubits powerful, you can well imagine that 500 is equal to all our quantum com uh, uh, computational capability, 100,000 um, qubit quantum computer, how powerful it will be, okay? So that's the kind of computational capability the quantum is going to bring in. Now, how it will change it? How it will change and impact the AI, okay? Our brain, this brain, uh, it works at 110 um, or 120 meter per second, and it does around 26 quadrillion computations per second at 110 um, a meter per second speed, okay? Hunan 1, which is a China supercomputer, it does around 32 quadrillion computations per second at a speed of light, right? Electrons, speed of light. But you know what? The comparison ends here. On the technology perspective, the comparison ends here. We consume, our brain, for doing 26 quadrillion computations per second, it consumes only 20 watts. Whereas, Hunan 1, for doing 32 quadrillion computations per second, it consumes 24 megawatts, which is like one small city, power of one small city, right? Second, we consume only this cranial, gentlemen, right? This khopri, itna mein ye brain 26 quadrillion computations per second kar raha hai. But the, the supercomputer Hunan 1 requires 724 square meter space, which is equal to two bedroom, seven two bedroom apartments. Okay, 7,000 square feet space. So technology is still not there. But when quantum walks in, this whole thing will jump multifold. Okay, if you put uh, quantum is like this, like if my laptop gets changed with a quantum laptop, the quantum laptop uh, will be equal to uh, 10 crore laptop ko agar aap ek jod dijiega, tab ja ke, yani 100 million times, quantum laptop will be 100 million times more powerful than my laptop, okay? Though quantum is currently into a super uh, cooled environment, uh, but you know how technology progresses, it will come out and start working into um, uh, the room temperature, right? Even if it is on a super cooled environment, it will change the cloud technology uh, definitely, which is already it is doing it. Look at, on this map, you will find there is no Indian company, okay? Quantum encryption, quantum hardware, quantum software, building quantum computers to quantum AI, optical quantum computers, quantum cloud computing, quantum circuits, we are not there. So we have to wake up to the fact to see that we start investing into these spaces and develop those technologies, okay? And be part of industrial revolution 4.0. It will exceed human intelligence. That's the prediction. By 2045, AI will exceed us. Okay, it will be equal. It, the ASI will be achieved. Uh, that is what the prediction is. Uh, by 2023, which is only two years downstream now, gentlemen, it is predicted that AGI will be achieved. Okay, so uh, today per hour, we are inventing so much, uh, which is equal to 90 uh, days of um, inventions uh, is being done every hour now. Okay. So uh, it is the law, it is, it is accelerating, the invention or the innovation cycle is accelerating and we need to ensure that we are also part of this revolution or this emerging destructive technology, we are part of this, okay? Your faculties, your institution, they need to be part of it. <coughs> From the AI knowledge part, every, every aspect of the learning which we have, be it psychology, biology, commerce, uh, from, um, um, economy, uh, every every aspect of our learning or our curriculum is impacted by AI, okay? And and you will find that uh, there are a lot of applications and use cases are there uh, which are being implemented in every field of our learning. And uh, if you look at the, the world, we have been doing a lot of coding, which we call it a symbolic <laughs> world. That was what the IT industry was, but it is now moved to a statistical world. This is the AI paradigm. A lot of machine learning algorithms are being embedded into our code. And, uh, and prediction is by in next 10 years, in coming decade, we humans have written 8 billion lines of code. 
that will get changed to AI algorithms. That means that we will be not coding anymore. We will be not testing anymore. We will be not doing change and configuration management to the code. These codes will evolve on its own, learn on its own, and develop and modify on its own. So if that happens, a lot of IT jobs will be gone, gentlemen. Um, the vacancy prediction is that in coming decade, 65% uh, of the IT jobs will be gone. That means 2 million people will be on the streets uh, due to you know, automation based on AI. Okay, and finally, it will be a sub symbolic word. Everything will be algorithms. Everything will be brains, which will be trained uh, for doing certain jobs for us. So if you look from the prediction perspective, uh, you will find that um, one, uh, one very stark prediction is by 2030, we are, humans will be not allowed to drive. Okay, it will be all autonomous vehicle, which will be driving us from one place to another. Okay, uh, the prediction is that your malls and all, you go and talk to your retail salesperson, they will get replaced by AI robots, uh, which will be doing that job. Uh, by uh, 2050 around, uh, you will be not able to understand that you are talking to a human being or to an AI. Okay, uh, you must have seen Sophia. If you haven't, go to YouTube, so find, see Sophia. Uh, you see that she's smiling, she's making a sad face, she's contrite, and, and it is as stated to what she's talking about. She makes a joke, she laughs about it, right? So a technological singularity is inevitable, gentlemen. Okay, there is no point of return. We cannot stop this technology. We have to become part of this technology. Moore's law is broken. Okay, because with quantum coming in, it will jump exponentially. I mean, it will be a logarithmic jump which will be happening in Moore's law. It is already broken, gentlemen. Okay, um, and and the new kind of chips or new physics which is coming in. Uh, on the quantum chips, which we call it, it will be altogether a complete different kind of technology, a different world which will be there. So we need to start getting aligned and start understanding. So what we are going to look at is, is this, okay? The robots, or you go and hit on YouTube, the Boston Dynamics, those robots are walking better than us. They are capable of even making a backflip, gentlemen, which we humans are not capable. I mean, some um, uh, athletes and all can do that, but we generally humans, are not able to do a backflip. These robots are doing a backflip. They're carrying 40 kgs or running at a speed of 40 kilometers per hour, okay, and balancing better than us. So where is the human parity? Where it is today? I mean, today and la last few years. If you look at, by 2016, on object recognition, the, uh, the AI was 96% closer to us. On speech recognition, it, it has become better than us in 2017. We make 5.5% error in the word speech recognition. AI is making only 5.1%. On machine reading and comprehension, okay, it is already 88.413 in 2018. Um, I mean, it must have crossed 90% uh, now, more than 90% now, okay, uh, with uh, DPT3. Uh, machine translation, it was 70% in 2018, and 70% equal to us. So you can well imagine last two, thousand, two, three years, how technology must have improved, right? So more than 10% of search now made by voice, and not long ago it was less than one person. So now people are talking to their machines. It is so capable that you are talking to your phone, either to Google Assistant, or to Alexa, or to Siri, or to Cortana, or Microsoft Windows, but you are talking to your machines now, okay? And that is AI. So on today's paradigm, uh, AI, uh, if you look at uh, unsupervised learning, supervised learning and reinforcement learning is being used into multiple areas. Unsupervised learning is something where you give the data, it learns on its own, and AI has come to that kind of capability, and it is being leveraged uh, for a um, um, lot of areas like structured discovery, uh, intuitive AI, all that area or targeted marketing, um, unsupervised learning is being used. Supervised learning is being used uh, for image classification, diagnostics, identity, uh, identity fraud and all, uh, or regression, uh, that supervised learning is being used. For reinforcement learning, a lot of other areas has opened up for them. Okay, you can uh, see that. And uh, this is a federated AI. So now AI has gone to a level um, uh, where your data will be safe, but AI will learn from that, and that AI will convey to us a super AI when when they found something which they are trained for. 
into your mobile phone, into your desktop, but your data will be not taken away. So it will be a small brain learning what you're doing, what kind of things you're doing, and if you are anti-government uh, or anti-India, and then they will inform it to the central authorities or authorities that, guys, this gentleman is becoming obnoxious, right? So this is known as federated AI. AI learns the small brains and transmits the data set to a central AI. It is becoming a capable of learning from one sort, okay? So it gives you one set of data, which is like this, and it can read any zero to nine, anybody, any human who writes it, AI can identify that. It is zero, it is one or two or three or whatever. We call it one sort learning, so it is becoming so powerful. DPT-3, okay, this transformer has been trained with $147 billion parameters, gentlemen. It is, it, the capability which is there today is so much that it is being touted that if you give a word to this uh, gentleman, a DPT-3, it can write the whole book on that word, okay? That is the kind of capability. From the perspective of gameplay, AlphaGo, uh, Google's uh, platform, which defeated Lee Sedol, the world champion in 2015, Google developed another application, they call it AlphaGero, and they allowed AlphaGero to play with AlphaGo. AlphaGo, when, when defeated Lee Sedol, the chances of humans to win from AlphaGo was 4%. And AlphaGero, which learned only from AlphaGo, it has never played with any human being, the chances for humans to win from Alpha Zero is only zero percent. You cannot win. And let me tell you why they why they are investing a humongous amount, more than twenty five million dollars in developing these kind of uh, AI applications. You know, when the balloon will be up, or we will be fighting a war, the uh, the countries which will be having this AI, they will decide the moves against our army, and we will be never able to win from it. So these games. Applications, AI-based game application and complex games like, like Go, they are being developed for strategy involvement uh, into warfare and all. Okay, we need to wake up to this fact. I'll not cover this, but this is something you need to go in and read. It tells very simple thing that we humans has uh, developed on this earth, not by the God, we have become intelligent uh, due to entropy or second law of thermodynamics. If we can become intelligent, then AI or the software will become intelligent too. So we achieved a cognitive niche, okay, and we became intelligent on this earth. Now the software and data which we are generating will also become intelligent. Given enough complexity or future history, we will also become intelligent. It also tells us another aspect of it. When it becomes intelligent, we will get fused with AI, okay, or silicon. So our DNA will get fused, and that is the biodigital fusion. Uh, it is being touted. Uh, the world is moving to. AI is working into multiple directions. Uh, this is one, we call it emulation, uh, where your brain has been taken, all your neurons, we have got 10 to power 38 neurons, around 78 billion neurons in our brain, or 100 billion neurons. Uh, so it, they are mapping every neuron and the synapses, how they, our brain works, and then they are developing and a virtual emulation. So tomorrow, you will be available on cloud, okay? So virtually, you will be available on cloud. Anybody who wants to interact with you, uh, another guy who is also on cloud can interact. That cloud emulation will predict what you want, what you want to eat at any moment of time, okay? And it will go to do things for you, control your house, uh, make foods available to you, and all. What, uh, so this emulation will be actually uh, you only, and that is known as whole brain emulation, which is being worked upon. Um, IBM is working upon a technology, they call it a brain computing. It is headed by an Indian, Meda, okay? And um, they said the brain in a box by 2020, okay, due to COVID, it may be a little, little delayed. They have also developing technology, they call it CDI, it is like our kid. So, Hamara jo bachcha hai, uh, it takes 21 years for us to become mature, okay, but this AI, this CDI will become mature in 21 months, 21 days, we don't know, I mean, but AI will learn much more faster, much more in focused way. So, this CDI, they are saying we will have a brain similar to a child. And the 70% of development will happen later on, uh, as it learns, okay? Brain-computer interface, BCI, uh, we currently type, we currently uh, talk to our computers, but tomorrow we will, we will be thinking and AI will be responding against it. It is already there. You hit BCI on YouTube, you'll find the paraplegic and quadriplegic people who cannot talk. 
they are thinking through with these devices and that thought is getting converted into words on the TV. Okay, and people are able to interact now with them. So AI takeoff is imminent, gentlemen. Let's try to understand why it is fearful for us. So if you look on this intelligence staircase, you'll find we humans are on the top, right? We operate between 90 to 140 IQ level. But the gorillas or chimpanzees, which they operate around 30 to 40 IQ level, you go to the nearest gorilla or chimpanzee, go to a zoo nearby to you, and try to explain trigonometric theorem or algebra to you. Okay, I don't know what it will do to you. Okay, okay, it may slap you. But what I'm trying to tell you is that humans who operate between 90 to 140 IQ, Einstein was 140 IQ level, you cannot go and explain algebra and trigonometric theorem to a gorilla or chimpanzee. Down below on the intelligence staircase is chicken, right? It does, it is, it does have an IQ level of 15, 20. And uh, this chicken, what we do? On a daily basis, we eat chicken chili, chicken tandoori, chicken what not, butter masala, or every kind of food on chicken we are eating, right? So we kill them in crores every day. So a uh, human at 90 to 140 IQ level is killing a uh, 15, 20 IQ level in crores every day. We don't, we don't have any remorse or any uh, feeling from the chicken. Down below, we are few. The insects are there, and what we have done, we have an, uh, actually, we are waging a chemical war against them, okay? We have obliterated the insects. And as I, in AI field, we are actually learning from them. We call it swarm computing. So drones, swarms, and all you must have heard, that is the swarm computing, we're learning from them. So, uh, so this is the intelligence staircase. Imagine this whole intelligence staircase on this earth, we call it the biological range, is down below. When artificial super intelligence will come in, it will operate at 12,500 IQ level. AGI, general intelligence, will operate at 5,000 IQ level. So you can well imagine a 5,000 IQ level or a 12,500 IQ level guy, uh, what will happen to us? Okay, it, it will come out with innovations, theorems, thought processes, strategic directions. We'll never understand what AI is trying to tell us. Okay, that's the fear. And the biggest fear is the perverse instantiation. Let me give you an example what perverse instantiation is. We you go to an AI, uh, artificial super intelligence, and say, hey, um, hame bhook lagti hai, right? we feel hunger. Uh, so you take away the hunger. So then AI, ASI, we think through and say, hey, bhook kisko lagti hai? Who feels hungry? Human beings? So let's kill human beings. Kisi ko bhook hi nahi lagi ke, bhook chala jayegi. Now this is perverse instantiation, okay? We are afraid of that, that we may ask something and it may take a decision which will be detrimental to human beings. OK, so we have got two options, gentlemen. We either will become immortals with the help of artificial intelligence or we will go extinct. OK, that is the first uh, part when we were discussing about. And that is the fear. A lot of these astrophysicists, uh, business people like Elon Musk and all, or um, um, they are talking about uh, this, this future. Okay, like Bill Gates recently came out and uh, said that why can't we understand it? Hame baat samaj mein kyun nahi aa rahi hai? Okay, so prediction is this. Okay, but you know how the prediction happens in technology field. We will predict 20, uh, the next 30 years, but it will happen in next 5 years or 10 years. Okay, so uh, the prediction is bending and uh, probably the uh, technologies of AGI and ASI will be uh, available in near future, very near future. We have already achieved uh, 2.5 million neurons based deep learning platform, which is equal to a mosquito brain. We'll, uh, 2015, um, um, recently they said that we will be reaching to a mouse brain. AGI, which is four or five years downstream, which will be equal to uh, the human brain. And uh, the collective human intelligence in the brain, uh, we will be achieving it. Uh, that will be the ASI. That is the exponential rate of computing we are looking at. And that is the prediction down below. So ASI, when I say mortality, ASI can help us in uh, pushing the boundary of aging, or you say we, it can help us in escape from aging. So death will be not an option anymore, and we will not get old. Okay, the technology like DNA splicing is already there. Uh, technology like CRISPR is there, which where you can DNA can be taken out, and few diseases like Wolf syndrome can be. Uh, so every DNA of yours has got 700 million genomes. We exactly know, and it has all been digitized. 
So we know exactly which genome has to be moved away so that Wolf syndrome, you will not suffer from Wolf syndrome. Uh, scientists are working towards uh, diabetes and cancer, taking away these hereditary diseases. So they'll be taking away. But ASI, with its predictable, predictive capability, can tell us how many more of these proteins and genomes can be moved so that we will stop aging, will not become old anymore. Okay. So artificial intelligence is helping us in moving into that direction. There will be a lot of collaterals. AI will generate an interactive collateral. We'll be not learning from our mobile devices and laptops. We'll be wearing our glasses and we will go into a mixed reality platforms or, audio, or, or AR, augmented reality and virtual reality area. And our learning will become an experience. No more ratna ratte hain kitabon ko karne ki jirurat nahi padegi. We can experience things. So we'll experience the periodic table. Okay, not only experience in history, we'll experience the periodic table. Okay, that is what the interactive technologies and three-dimensional technologies. Earth will move from red to green. That is where AI is touted to help us in managing our environment. It's a big area. AI ethics, uh, the good AI and bad AI. It's a big area, gentlemen. Okay, you can go ahead and look at it. Uh, governance of AI, the ethical control, the verification, how it is transparent or not. Can it explain what action it is taking? All that is the part of the ethics world, okay? And a lot of debates are going on, and and, and 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 a lot of scientists are worried about it. How do we ensure that every time unbiased and a good AI is generated, okay? A bad AI can be a detriment to us. So from level one to level, we are already at level three. So by level five, it, AI will be like us. That will be general AI. Good AI, bad AI. Um, uh, there is there is the one projection that our Upanishads, okay, uh, they can help us in doing a mathematical modeling for good AI. Sanskrit is being taught Am I am I still there or are you able to hear me? Yes, sorry. Sanskrit is being taught it as an unambiguous language. We can help us in talking to AI, okay, uh, in remote locations and all. Uh, so we need to be aware of that and uh, let me go ahead. So AI will help us from moving what we are today. OK, the homo sapiens, this homo sapiens. We are suffering from what we suffer today from war. We suffer from famine. We suffer from disease. OK, but AI will help us moving away from this. To. Immortality, which I just explained to you. To happiness, a lot of countries will be measured on a happiness index. Humans need to be happy. All mundane work will be taken over by AI. Okay, so things uh, um, um, all all which is manual, which is repetitive in nature, AI will take away, and we will be given a lot of happiness. Our life will be much more free, uh, much more uh, towards uh, thinking processes, R and D, uh, those kind of a things which we are designed for. That is what humans will be doing it. Okay, and we will achieve a divinity. OK, and divinity, I mean, uh, at the level which humans would like to have. And and if I say in Hindi, we will become a god. OK, that is the homo deus. So that is where AI is going to help us to go towards. Now, let us understand this uh, perspective before I, I can take this whole discussion to the end part of it. Uh, it's a decision with strategic advantage. OK, uh, this is why people are investing uh, US putting three trillion dollars, China putting 147 billion dollars into AI because this will provide a decisive strategic advantage. Nuclear bomb was a decisive strategic advantage, gentlemen. When they achieved it, they put a non-proliferation treaty and countries like us, we took 32 years to have our own nuclear power, our own poker in 1974, right? They developed uh, ICBMs and IRBMs, uh, space wars, satellites and all, and they put up a ban on cryogenic engine. We took 25 years to put our own rocket in space. Now they are developing artificial super intelligence, a 10 off or a singleton. If they develop it and we not, we are doomed this time. We are probably we are looking at a permanent slavery gentlemen. OK, and that this is known as this is a strategic advantage because artificial super intelligence will ensure that we are put into a perpetual servitude or in a perpetual slavery. We'll have everything. 
we will have food on table. We will have transportation like autonomous vehicles, precision agriculture where AI will not only uh, sow the seed but grow it up, rip it up, uh, process the food, uh, cook the food, and bring it on our table. Okay, we'll have everything, but then we will not have the freedom. We'll not have the soil. Plan. So there will be only few countries probably, or probably few companies on this earth which will have a global domination, leveraging the artificial super intelligence. And ASI will also convince us that we are happy. Okay, it's such a powerful technology. India is not on Industrial Revolution 4.0 map. Look at the top 100 companies in AI. None of them are in India. Okay, but what we need now is an innovation, an indigenous innovation. We have to generate our own IP, invest more in products. We have to generate more startups, which, which is innovative, uh, which is indigenous, and we can have an original thought process in AI space, not something copycat Okay, that is going to be very bad for India, a probably detrimental. Look at the top hundred companies, all are into Northern America. China is picking up very fast, and there will be no catching up tomorrow. So, what my, um, my um, exhaustion to you guys is, you young people, that you need to start thinking into AI terms. You need to start thinking in the startup terms. And, and take India to the next level. If you look from the investment breakup perspective, 32% maximum investment is happening in IT world. Uh, government and administration is hardly doing 2% investment. Okay, and other consumer electronics or uh, hospital and healthcare, they are investing very low, but uh, a very small amount. But the maximum benefit we can gain into these domains in healthcare, in manufacturing, in automotive, in power generation, AI. Uh, so investments are growing up now into those spaces. I'll not cover that. AI is everywhere, every domain, if you look for. What we need to understand is, you can read this, a lot of use cases in telecom uh, AI is being implemented. But we need to understand that AI will come into those two aspects, the impact, where there is data available and there is an ROI, AI will get implemented. Okay, that is that is what I wanted to tell you into that slide. The companies are becoming hyper competitive. They are becoming uh, declarative. So no more uh, companies, uh, we make a mistake when something happens and then we write a, a standard operating procedure and say that, hey, we will not get it done again. This mistake will not happen again. Now AI is helping us to predict. So companies are becoming predictive. They are predicting this is going to happen, so you are going to take care of that now. Okay, so from hindsight, we have moved to these companies or industry and government and academia is moving to the foresight, leveraging AI uh, from data lakes to data everywhere. Moore law is getting um, uh, disrupted by new physics. From programming, the world has moved uh, to a training, right? We are training these algorithms more and more. So data has no more burden, gentlemen. It has become an opportunity for us and we have to see that how do we leverage it. If you don't have an AI strategy, you are going to die in the world that is coming. This is David Bing, the CEO of AI. And this, this is true for industry, this is true for institutions and universities and colleges and schools, and that is true for the government also, okay? What kind of jobs will be left out to us? Jobs which will have creativity and strategy and the compassion. Those jobs, jobs like CEO, or uh, MA have expert, these jobs will be left out to us. But jobs which does not need compassion and can be optimized, they'll go on. Humans will be not there. So truck drivers, security guard, uh, so uh, they'll be not left out to us, okay? These jobs will be gone. These jobs will be gone. Jobs where compassion needed, like a daily companion or a crisis hotline volunteer, they'll remain uh, with humans, but they will leverage AI a lot. AI will take away the second quadrant. This quadrant, AI will be leveraged a lot by humans, but humans will be still there. Here, humans will be there, uh, but they will be leveraging AI in one way or other to do, do their jobs, augment themselves. Uh, 60,000, uh, below 60,000, a lot of jobs are at risk now, like waiters, retail sales, personal care aides, store clerks. These jobs are going to go away, medical assistants and all. 
jobs like physicians, chief executive, doctors, dentists, they'll be still there with us. These jobs are at risk. So what do we need to do? We need to become critical thinkers. Then only we can compete with the AI world. Push the envelope, okay? Think ahead, more innovative, naturally curious, and not easily overwhelmed. So we, take, we can take a lot of stress. Okay, we can handle stress. That is what we need to learn now. And we should become, we should love maths and science in AI world to succeed. You know this gentleman, right? Put in. And recently he came out and said, artificial intelligence is the future, not only for Russia, but for all humankind. It comes with colossal opportunities, but also threats that are difficult to predict. Whoever becomes the leader in this sphere will become the ruler of the world. See, mind it, last line, the ruler of the world. They are very clear. They are investing into AI to rule the world. Okay? We need to wake up to this fact. Look at uh, the investment which is happening. I just told you, US is putting $3 trillion, China is putting $147 billion into AI area. NLP, machine learning, computer vision, technology platforms, intelligence, uh, UAV or drones, self-driving, autonomous vehicles, uh, neuromorphic computing or processor computing chips, speech recognition and all. Okay, so a humongous amount of money is being invested. China has gone ahead than you, uh, US now and publishing more papers, more research papers. Maximum investment is happening in Northern America into AI companies. It's an emerging new world order, gentlemen. Okay, if you can, you can go to this site. Uh, partnership on AI, and you will find companies like Amazon, Google, IBM, Microsoft, they've all met hands. They have adopted a strategy, they call it AI first strategy. Okay, they're sharing IP knowledge with each other. And this only happens when government choreographs it. Okay, so American government has choreographed this whole thing up. These are all American companies, and they have adopted a strategy AI first. Hum jo bhi karenge, AI ko aage rakhe karenge. So we have to wake up to that fact and see that we also do that, okay? Every institution of us. So India is on a cusp of century's biggest opportunity. We have got $3 trillion worth of GDP. Um, uh, we have got uh, per capita income of $2,000. Uh, we have got 135 billion population with 42% of that into the younger realm. So we are poised to become a Vishu Guru. We have got 3.5 million people working into IT space. So we need to become uh, cognizant to this fact. What we are doing in Viti, we are helping uh, companies like uh, to establish uh, uh, Viti or AI innovation hubs. We are helping them in operationalizing it. We are being, bringing projects into these hubs, into institutions, engineering colleges and universities and, um, and giving these projects to students and faculty so that they can make their hands dirty. Okay, not only earn from it, but also make their hands dirty. So when these students pass out and they have already executed few projects, they can hit the ground running. Okay, not only hit the ground, they can earn better into this upcoming AI world. So we are establishing our AI innovation hubs in tier one, tier two cities. We are also establishing AI innovation exchanges where we work with, we, we are all IT people. We work with uh, industry, bring their projects and move into uh, um, academic environment to get it executed. Uh, we have launched a lot of courses which is based on uh, projects, uh, projects and products, uh, research oriented. We call it PBL project based learning uh, for academia, for businesses, uh, for community, for government uh, on skill development. We are working with them. We call it AI for all. Uh, we are working on multiple areas on uh, AI projects like healthcare. We are working. Uh, we recently launched a software. We call it CoVision uh, with help of IIIT Bhagalpur. Um, actually, uh, um, uh, process from there, they developed this software. And uh, this software predicts the COVID infection in your lungs. Uh, it is under ICMR approval. As, as it becomes available, obviously, we'll take it to the market. You can go and find it about it. So a lot of other areas we are working upon, um, from logistics to healthcare to um, every area. In Viti Research, so we have got two organizations, Sati Viti AI Technologies and Viti Research Foundation, which I had. On Viti Research Foundation, we work on uh, uh, projects like traffic management system, virtual nervous system. Uh, these, these projects have got a societal impact and public benefit involved. Uh, so we work with them. 
uh, we are developing a, a platform, AI-based platform, which is known as Sarthik or uh, Project Doody, where we are developing a robotic implementation, an AI-based robotic implementation, which will work 24 into 7, get itself charged from solar or sun, and go on cleaning our water bodies from uh, floating waste, like plastics, juta, chappal. It will go on removing that. So this kind of kachua, Dudi is a Sanskrit word, it means kachua, a small tortoise. We are doing this kind of a project. These projects have got a high impact on our society. So come join us, gentlemen. Uh, we are there. We have got AI community hurdle, the people, developers. Uh, we have got industry level. We are working with a lot of industries and their CEOs and managing directors. We are working with a lot of vice chancellors. We are already partners to more than 15 universities, uh, three of the IITs and triple IITs. We are working very closely with them uh, on two different projects. So come join us. Uh, we are there. Our groups are available on LinkedIn as AI for Humanity and Women of AI. Uh, you can join that work uh, group. We go on publishing a lot of information on AI. Uh, you can also become party to it. Uh, you can visit us on Viti AI. And, and, and you can join me on Twitter too or on my profile too. Okay, I go on keeping on sharing a lot of information on AI, how AI is progressing. Uh, we are there on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. Uh, thank you, thank you. And uh, this is me. You can note down my email address and number anytime you believe that you need uh, some help from me. Let me know. Uh, any questions? I'm open to questions now. Thank you. Um, um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Am I, am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so it was an interesting topic you've taken today. Uh, I have one doubt. Uh, I keep. I was studying this the deep learning framework TensorFlow. So when I was studying that, uh, I came up with this doubt actually. Uh, thing is, AI is being like uh, booming around the world right now, right? And also, we need we need to combine these things, uh, A and like embedded systems, uh, for an example, for like a train model, or any kind of a hardware that uh, we code into its memory. Like, how can you be uh, make a train model in like in the systems like Nvidia, like that? In which way we can? Do it? See, on an specific part of it, okay. Um, any any AI applications. Uh, you develop on the software or deep learning platform, you need to deploy a leveraging Raspberry Pi or Arduino on the hardware, whatever hardware implementations uh, you need to have, right? If there is something specific help you require, uh, you can definitely approach us. I uh, will help you in implementing it on, uh, on the hardware, okay? We recently developed around 24 uh, AI-based applications with BML Munjal University. We trained 120 students. Not only we taught them, how to develop leveraging Python and algorithms on deep learning platform, but also deploy it on hardware like Arduino and Raspberry Pi for implementation of it. Yeah, thank you. Sir. Uh, sir, and also like uh, how we Hello. I'm not able to hear you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, sir. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Now you are yeah. uh, right. Like how how A can be implemented in VR, like even much more if we see it in the future. So there are platforms available on virtual reality platforms, okay, where the integration touch points are available. And any virtual reality, a lot of interactive like on gaming platforms on a virtual reality where AI is being leveraged to create the scenarios, okay? So AI on the fly generates the scenario in virtual reality for you, depending upon what that scenario is and what kind of interaction you require uh, to establish it. And there are platforms which you can uh, explore um, and you'll be able to find it out. Go on Google and, and see those platforms which you want to access. It also depends upon the hardware you want to access. Uh, like uh, if you are accessing HoloLens, uh, it's a Unity platform where you can uh, start integrating AI or algorithm or subroutines into that to make it interactive. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
students anyone having a doubt i would like to thank our uh, chief guest mr kundanalal for enlightening the students with his knowledge uh, today's webinar was uh, full of knowledge and interesting things it gave a new insights into the topic artificial intelligence and also revealed some interesting facts i'm pretty sure that precious knowledge that mr kundanalal gave a, will definitely help the students in the studies and the future once again i would like to thank mr kundanalal for taking out the time from his busy schedule and enlightening us with the knowledge thank you so much sir thank you I, thank you sir